know, just, just, just drunk on our blood, having their way with us. And I, for one, am sick of these people. We need to hate them. We need to disdain them. We need to beat the drum that they are illegitimate criminals. And if we just keep beating that drum and never shut up and face the horror of what we've been incrementally snugged into. I mean, we've dug our own graves. We're in the grave now. The New World Order standing above us, urinating on us. And I, for one, am sick of it. That didn't rain, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Oh, now I've got a headache. I mean, this is really upsetting me. Okay, I don't even want to be here at the show today. I mean, this is so horrible and makes me so angry that I probably shouldn't even be on the air today because I'm really worried about what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I'm mad. And, and you should be mad, too, because that is evidence of the fact that your brain, your psyche, your spirit, your soul knows that we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. We've got a oppressive police state hanging over us to enforce at gunpoint the robberies that are taking place by these corrupt feudal lords that are over us. Now I'm going to give you the phone number, and we're going to take your phone calls, and just I'm going to take a lot of them. 1-800-259-9231. 1-800-259-9231. Two five nine ninety two thirty one is the toll free number to join us worldwide here, my friends. The good news is there is a big awakening happening. People are getting serious. They are focusing. And that's why the establishment is openly now saying, yes, we're going to have kill switches. Yes, we're going to control ISPs. Yes, we're going to block what you can see. Yes, we're taking over the Web. Yes, it's Chinese style control. That's Lieberman's own words. Uh, it's all happening. It's all happening. They know you're rising. They know you found your legs. They know you're wiping the sleep out of your eyes, spiritually, psychologically, physically. They can hear your engine fire up like a 450-horsepower Hemi, and they can hear that roar coming through those pipes, and they are scared, ladies and gentlemen, and so they're going to start World War III with Iran. They're going to hammer the economy down. I mean... I was reading this morning where there's Taiwanese giant skimmers that one ship that they've been offering us for over a month and a half that's been waiting, that this one ship can remove more oil a day than all the other ships involved. That's why Obama blocked the Dutch, the Norwegians, the Taiwanese. They've got these mega ships. And it's confirmed that they're never going to let them help. They're never going to let the cities and counties and states I heard the governor this morning in Mississippi where it's finally hitting the estuaries and the bays, and they could have just simply blocked it by putting sand berms up, but the, but the environmentalists said no. They're not environmentalists. They're feudal lords. You understand that? It's about them telling you if you can wipe your hind in. It's about the government for you to breathe. You've got to pay a tax to these people. You understand? We always joke about, may I have permission to breathe? <sighs> yes, you've got to pay us a carbon tax on that because you're exhaling a poison, as Bill Gates said. That's why I put an image of humans up on the screen at the, at the TED convention two months ago and said, we've got to lower this down to zero to stop the carbon. Everybody laughed. All the little globalists. It's like, ah, 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 we're talking about mass killing. No one will get it. They're so stupid when they watch this on Internet. <laughs> and I'm supposed to sit here as a red-blooded male. I mean, I'm red-blooded, folks. I mean, isn't everybody like me? I know a lot of you out there are. I know growing up. In high school and college, I ran into a lot of people where I lived in North Texas that if you looked at them wrong, they'd start trying to beat the daylights out of you. And boy, let me tell you, you better fight them with everything you had or you're going to go to the hospital. It was you or them. What, I mean, how can you get a man fighting mad if somebody says something smart mouth to their girlfriend or somebody cuts them off in traffic? But, but these people can poison your water, poison your food, steal your whole future, debase your currency, rob you through inflation, and you can't get angry because you're under a spell. You're under mind control. What's a secret society? That's a thousand-year-old name for an intelligence agency. What's a spell? A spell is just mind control. A spell is a mind trick, hypnotized, a game. You're in a trance, folks. Look, I'm not in a trance, okay? How am I who's red-blooded? How am I, a red-blooded person, not supposed to get angry here? 
How am I not supposed to be crazed with concern and animating energy to resist these people? We're a nation of lazy slugs, myself included. We always pass the job on to somebody else. We always pass the initiative on to somebody else. We always wait till tomorrow and then wait till next week and then wait till next year. There isn't time. There isn't time. There isn't time. It's worse than I thought. And I have confirmed, there is no doubt, that since April 20th, how many days is that? Guys, do the calculator. What's 28 days, or the 28th day of June, and then what was it, 30 days in May or 31? I forget. Let's just say 30 and 20. So, so how many days is that? How many days since the oil spill? What's 28, 30, and 20? How many? 78 days. 78 days. Two and a half months. 78 days that's happened. And you've got all uh, Vanguard, the president's own mutual fund, where almost all his money's invested is $10 million plus dollars. Uh, you've got uh, Goldman Sachs dumping 44% of their stock. You've got the CEO of BP dumping 33-plus percent, over a third, is what the media reported. You've got all these other funds just dumping BP in the week before. You've got this strange modification that was done on the wellhead two hours before it blew up. You've got all the secrecy. You've got the engineers on board who were on record in the Coast Guard uh, trial they had almost a month ago, the Coast Guard hearing, saying they had told them months before this was going to cause an explosion, and the well had indeed already ruptured weeks before, and they gave them more orders that they said would cause an explosion. A lot of times when the globalists stage something, they just give someone an order that they know will cause a chain reaction. Then there's plausible deniability. And then if that wasn't enough, for at least 70 days of the, of the 78, because I remember a week into it, there were, were counties, there were states, there were the, the, the cities. They were out there knowing that, especially in Louisiana with those estuaries where most of their fishing goes on, you know, huge marshlands, huge brackish areas full of shrimp and fish and where a lot of their fishing goes on. And the Fed said, you know what, 10 miles in, we now declare as federal. 10 miles into land, you can't block. Because first they tried to block right out at the ocean. They'd say, no, you're not blocking that at the ocean. And they'd have ways for the fish to swim around out of the brackish areas. It would just, it would just have a brake line in front so they could you know, catch the oil there. And the Fed said no. And then Dutch and uh, Taiwanese and other ships arrived, giant ships designed for this that could scoop up one of these things they were reporting could pump in 50,000 barrels a day. 50,000 barrels a day. By one estimate, I've seen that one ship can get about 10% of the oil coming out each day. And there's scores, there's more than 30 ships of similar type, these new modern mega ships that could come and could already be here and doing this over a month ago. And the government says, no, we're not going to get rid of the Jones Act uh, for an emergency waiver for Gulf relief, they could do instantly. No, we're not going to let the counties and states fix it. No, these are terrorists. And you know why? They can't wait till the first hurricane comes into the Gulf. Thank God Alex turned away towards Mexico. They can't wait until it drives those hundreds of millions of gallons of oil up onto our beaches and they get to declare an emergency and pass their stinking carbon tax. Oh, you don't want their carbon tax? They're going to teach you a lesson. They blew that oil well and they can't wait for that oil to come ashore and you're not going to stop them. Senator Sessions was just uh, doing his opening statement at Kagan. She's wearing a giant blue clown dress. I'm not exaggerating. It, it, it literally looks like it's about 20 sizes too big for her. It looks like something out of Alice in Wonderland that the Wicked Queen would wear. Her head looks like something out of Beetlejuice, you know, the shrunken head people. I mean, it doesn't look like it. This is like a Beetlejuice nightmare. This woman may, is maybe like a demonic entity, an interdimensional shapeshifter. I'm starting to believe David I care for a moment. I'm joking about that, folks. I'm not joking about her. Look, her head looks smaller than her hands. They just showed a shot of her, and 
I'm actually starting to have hallucinations looking at her. And she is sitting there with this arrogant, angry look on her face, even as other senators grovel to her. And I've never seen anyone in a confirmation hearing look like this. She has an arrogant stance, wearing a giant clown outfit. She is unable to smile. Uh, and they've tried to doll her up a bit, which makes her only look more cartoonish. Uh, but again, I don't care how she looks, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the issue. This woman is a tyrant. This woman... Uh, worships this Israeli judge who Judge Bork called the worst judge in the world, who believes judges should make law and rule as tyrants. Uh, this woman is anti-Second Amendment, anti-free speech. I mean, what more do I have to say? You've heard the quotes. I, I've never, this country is going to hell in a handbasket. I just can't handle it anymore.